Hello and welcome to the January 2016 Downtown Pittsburgh IBD Meetup presentation. My name is Eric Rossi. I'm the co-organizer of this meetup group. Introduction. The, the mission statement for this group is to educate individual investors about CanSlim investing strategy. And really the goal is to identify the best educational material from sources such as books, articles, webinars, etc. So that you don't have to go through reading and watching all these videos. Hopefully you can just get pointed to the best of the best information here. And just a little disclaimer, this presentation is educational in nature. This should not be construed as recommendations to buy or sell securities. Investing does carry risk of losing your capital. I'm a non-professional volunteer investor, and Investors Business Daily, IBD, and Canslim are registered trademarks of Investors Business Daily, Inc., and Meetup is a registered trademark of Meetup, Inc. Here's the topics for this month. We're going to cover a weekly investing routine. So last month covered a daily investing routine and an annual routine since it was the end of the calendar year. So we'll go into a weekly investing routine here, some information about short selling, including some examples, analysis of the current market, the, the not only the NASDAQ, and then conclusion. So this is a sample weekly investing routine that, that you can consider using and you could always pick pieces out of this if you don't want to do all of this you could add to this modify it however you want this is basically the routine that i go through each weekend and i would say on average it probably takes me one to two hours a week to go through this and it depends on how much activity was was happening during that week if i bought and sold a lot of stocks then I would have more work to do on the weekend, but <clears throat> if I'm just looking at my watch list and not buying, not trading during that week, then there's less work to do. So these, these are all the items to be covered here, and I'll go through each of them in detail here. Okay, the first item on the weekly investing routine is what I call the market dashboard. And this is just something I came up with to kind of gauge what the overall market's doing. And there's a few parts to this here. I, I couldn't fit it all in one slide. But these are some things to consider. And if you wanted to get fancy with this, you could make this an Excel file where the, the lights toggle red, green, or yellow, depending on your what you put in your actual there, actual column. But I just manually do this each week. So this was a recent one from maybe about a week ago in the third week of January. So the first item is the big picture, and you can find this every day in IBD. There's basically three options here for the, the market pulse. It's either a confirmed uptrend, uptrend under pressure, or correction. And those correspond with green, yellow, and red in the dashboard. So right here, you can see the market's in a correction, so that's red. The next item I call uptrend health, and you could even call this uptrend duration. IBD and Bill O'Neill's book say that in the first four weeks of a new market uptrend is when a lot of the leaders will break out of sound bases. So if the uptrend is in the first month, that's a better time to buy than an uptrend that's longer than a month. And the longer the uptrend goes, generally, with no correction, it becomes riskier and less stocks will be breaking out. And if we're not in an uptrend, in other words, if, if we're not in up, a confirmed uptrend or uptrend under pressure and we're in a correction, then I mark that as red. So right here, we're in a correction, so that's red. The number of distribution days here, there's some guidance in Mac Algani's book, How to Make Money in Stocks Getting Started, about how to manage your portfolio based on distribution days. I don't put a whole lot of faith in this, or I, sh I should say I don't put a whole lot of waiting in this because the, I've seen cases where the market had six or seven distribution days and then it still took off from there and did well. So this is another data point, but it's I would say it's one of the lesser important ones in my opinion. So at the time I did this, we were in a correction, which is red. And then Fed activity. This is the Federal Reserve. Basically, if 
the the Fed is one of the most influential factors in the market. So if they're raising interest rates, then that tends to not bode very well for the overall market. And if they're lowering interest rates or they're doing something such as quantitative easing like they did in 2009, starting in 2009, then that tends to be better for the market. So right now they, they just raised interest rates for the first time in many years. So that happened in December. And they were expecting more increases this year. Although the statement that came out this week from Jan Yellen, it sounds like they might be slowing down. But regardless, they are raising rates, so this one gets a red. So you can see so far, the market's not in a good place. This is not a good time to be investing heavily in, in long positions. The next two items are the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And basically, every day in IBD, they do something called What's the Market Trend? And they assign an accumulation distribution rating to these two indices. So based on that accumulation distribution rating, I will assign green, yellow, or red. At this time, they're both E, so I'm giving those two reds. And then the IBD 50, and this, if you, if you don't know how to find the IBD 50, then it is 0 IBD 5 is the, the ticker symbol. You can find that on if you type that in investors.com, 0IBD5, you can actually look at a chart of, it's an aggregate chart of all the IBD50 stocks at a given time. This one's a little more subjective because they don't assign a accumulation distribution rating to this index. So I just, I just say if there's a lot of accumulation, that's green, a lot of distribution's red, and if we're in the middle, then I go yellow. So at this time, you can see so far this year, this index is down quite a bit, and it's below the 10-week and 40-week moving averages, so I gave that a red. So far, not looking too good here. Okay, so this, just for your information, this is where you find the accumulation distribution rating for the NASDAQ and S&P 500. In the paper every day, there's what's the market trend, and if you look right here, it says the accumulation distribution rating. So that's where that came from. Okay, the last part of the market dashboard is when was the last bull market? And this is important because the first two years of a bull market, of a new bull market, are where the biggest gains are made. And then as the bull market becomes older than two years, and then the older it becomes, the riskier it tends to become to invest in growth stocks. And this is kind of where we are right now. This bull market's been going on since 2009. So this is actually the longest bull market since in, in the period, at least from 1970 till now. So I gave this a yellow because we are still in an overall bull market. Now we could be transitioning into a bear market right now. It's, I think it's too early to tell, and this is a little subjective, but I basically say if, if the market corrects 20% and it's, that happens over a period of, of at least, a, let's say, a month, then I'm going to call it a bear market, and uh, it has to do that 20% on a closing basis, not on an intraday basis. So we're not quite there yet. Uh, right now, last I looked, the NASDAQ was down about 15% for the from the peak till now. So we're getting close to turning this one red, but for right now it's still yellow. The last bear market, that's important because if we just came out of a bear market and we're moving into a bull market, that's the best time to make the best returns. So if the last bear market was in the past you know, I said here the past zero to two years, that means we're in the early stages of a bull market and we're going to probably have better gains during that time, the best gains. If the last bear market was long ago, like right now, the last bear market, in my opinion at least, was 2008, 2009, that was over five years ago. And so we, this bull market now is, is IBD calls it long in the tooth. And it's a little bit riskier and stocks are tending to not make as big of gains and the market tends to be more choppy and sideways. So I gave this a red because the last bear market 
ended in 2009. And the last item on the dashboard is intermediate corrections. If you look in Bill O'Neill's book, How to Make Money in Stocks, he talks about the number of intermediate corrections. And so here I said, if we're in zero to two and we're in a bull market, then I'm giving this a green. Uh, three to four intermediate corrections is, is yellow, and then five or more is red. So right now we're actually in the process of forming, in, in my count, the ninth intermediate correction. So I gave this a red. And I'll give some information about intermediate corrections on the next slide. Okay, so intermediate corrections are defined roughly as a correction between 10 and 20%. And 20% is kind of the cutoff for a correction greater than that is defined as a, as a bear market. So if you look on this chart here, of this is a, a weekly chart of the NASDAQ. Now we'd have to do the math here, but we can see that there's a correction here, there's one here, there's one here, and then there's one that we're currently in right now. So we'd have to do the math on that to see, but I know that based on already looking at this that all of those fall into this range. So that's a way you can count the intermediate corrections. In Mac Algani's book, there's also uh, there's a good section about this in his book. Okay, so that concludes the market dashboard. The next item on the weekly investing routine is to record your account balances and your percent equity in each account, and then your grand totals. And these are just fictitious values here. But this is important because if you look at this every week, then you can see the trend. Is your account balance, are they going up or down? Are they unchanged? And it's useful to know your percent equity because if the market is weak like right now, you probably want to be less invested. And if we are in a period such as 2009 where we've had a, a really severe bear market and we're starting to show an uptrend, that's a time you want to start getting invested a lot more heavily. Okay, the next items in the weekly routine to check your check a weekly chart for your current positions. And you can use the base cheat sheet that is posted in the file section on our meetup group to do this. And it's good to check your positions every day. And you know you want to look at the daily and the weekly, but I really focus on the weekly because that gives you a longer perspective. And then you also want to check the IBD mini chart for any of your positions. And an example is shown here for Facebook. This is important because they will often provide information they might say that it's forming a new base or it's showing an alternate buy point and i just i sometimes will see they, they will interpret the chart differently than i do so that's that's useful or if they interpret it the same then that's okay too all right next two items the first one here is to review and update alerts or stop orders for your current positions so it's useful to have alerts put on your positions so that you can take your profits when you want to or you can cut your losses when you want to and alerts mean that your broker is just going to give you some type of alert that a stock fell within a certain price range or there was a, a volume change or the moving averages the stock maybe crossed above the 50-day moving average or, or something like that there, and the alerts vary by broker MarketSmith, you can set alerts, uh, and I don't have MarketSmith, but I think you can set a lot of different types of alerts. So <clears throat> at least to do that, because especially if you work for a living and you can't be sitting there watching your stocks every every five or ten minutes, this is, this is useful to get a notification. You could get an email or a text message when your stock falls, let's say, below your stop loss. So you can go in and and make your and sell your position to cut your losses. Another thing you can consider, if you don't do an alert, you can set what's called a some type of a limit order or stop order. And I use stop orders quite a bit because if, if I want to buy a stock on a breakout from a base, then you can set a stop order to buy the stock as it goes through that, that buy point. So a limit order is basically to buy or sell a stock at a particular price or better. 
So if you set a limit order to buy a stock at $50 a share, if the stock goes to 50 or below, then that order is going to get executed. Likewise with a stop, or I should say opposite with a stop order, if you set a stop order to buy a stock at $50 a share, then if the stock broke above $50 a share, then that order would get executed. The next item is to update your portfolio performance. It's really nice. A picture is really nice to see your, your performance. So I chart my total portfolio value each week, and I do it with and without contributions because it's kind of misleading. If you chart it with your contributions, then your account, even if you took losses throughout the year, but your contributions were higher than your losses, you're going to be showing that your account is doing better than it really is. So it's useful to see without the contributions because that's really showing what your investments are doing, whether they're profitable or not. I like to compare my portfolio value to how it would have grown that week if it was the same gain as the NASDAQ. You could also compare it to the S&P 500. You know, it's good if you, you want to be outperforming these indices if you can. And then I chart each account value. So if you have multiple accounts like a brokerage account, a Roth IRA, a 401k, a 403b, you want to look at all your accounts each week so that you're not neglecting any of them. All right, I recommend watching The Investing Show. This used to be called the IBD Weekend Radio Show, and now it's a video on IBD videos. And I show an example here. It's usually about a 15 to 20 minute video with Amy Smith and Matt Galgani. And I always learn something out of this. So it's, that's, it's a useful thing to go through each week. You could also watch the IBD stock analysis videos. Those are on Tuesday and Thursday. And these are nice because you could actually go and see which stock they're doing. For example, right here, they're looking at Starbucks. And you could go analyze Starbucks on your own and make your own conclusion. What do you see in the fundamentals? What do you see in the chart? and then compare that to what IBD says. And hopefully you're pretty close in your conclusion. And it's especially good for the chart reading because I like to see how they interpret the chart and the bases and the buy point. And I like to compare that against what my opinion is. So that concludes the weekly investing routine. Let's move on to short selling. And there's gonna be four parts we're gonna cover here. We're gonna cover basic concepts. We're going to cover a head and shoulders pattern, a late stage base breakout pattern, and then some resources where you can learn more. So basic concepts, short selling is where you sell a stock, you borrow money to sell a stock at a certain price, and then you later come back and you buy the price at, you buy the stock at hopefully a lower price, and that's where you would make money. So this is a strategy to where you would, you think a stock is gonna go down in value is when you would short sell, as opposed to buying a stock, thinking it's going to go up in value and then later selling it. So some basic concepts here, you wanna short sell when the overall market is correcting and ideally entering a new bear market because three out of four stocks will follow the overall market trend so if the market is starting to trend downward, then growth stocks will tend to do the same. So you're putting the odds in your favor by shorting during this time. And the market has an overall bullish and upward bias. So if you look at a long term, like a 50 year, 100 year kind of chart, the market does go up over time. So short selling is trickier in that regards because you're putting, the odds are not so much in your favor because the market is trending upwards most of the time. So bear markets occur about once every three years, and, and that's useful to know because, for example, right now, the last bear market we had ended in 2009. Well, that was seven years ago. So we're long overdue for a bear market historically. So now is a, is a good time to be thinking about short selling. Bear markets are usually brought on by deteriorating basic economic conditions or by unusual specific events. So the, a deteriorating basic condition, you know, you could think of something such as the housing and financial crisis of 2007, 2008, because those were deteriorating basic conditions in the economy. 
And then a war would be a type of unusual specific event that could also trigger a bear market. And markets tend to decline much faster than they rise. And you can see some example here below. This is a, an excerpt from the NASDAQ. And you can see here, it took, it took a long time and a steady climb here to go up this amount. And you can see, look at that, it, it actually wiped out all of those months of gains completely were wiped out in a matter of a few weeks. And then again, we, we go up for a while and then look how steep, how it comes down much steeper than it went up. So this is why short selling can be good for making some shorter term gains because often you'll find that stocks take a long time to make big gains and then you can lose them really quickly. Okay, so five faulty chart patterns for short selling. One is a, a late stage base. Another is a V-type of, of formation, such as a V-type cup-shaped base, where we want to see them more rounded. Wide and loose price formations, which tend to be seen in later stage bases. If it's a cup with handle, the handle we want the handle to actually trend to, to drift downwards. If the handle is wedging upwards, then that is a faulty aspect of a chart pattern. And handles forming in the lower half of the base are another faulty pattern. So you want to short the big leaders from the preceding bull market cycle. So you want to think about, if you're looking at stocks to short right now, you want to think and look back at who were the big winners over the past few years. Stocks like a couple that I looked at recently were Biogen, Skechers, Amberella. Those are stocks that really did well and outperformed, and they were some of the best performers. Those are the ones that you want to watch for a short sale opportunity because the ones that went up a lot, they're going to come down a lot as well because they have a large following from institutions that have been buying and acquiring shares over a number of years. So when they start dumping shares, you could see the stock price go down very quickly. IBD studies actually show that more institutions own shares of a stock one to two years after the stock tops than they did during the big advance. So this means that even most mutual fund managers, they're late to the game. They're, they own more shares after the stock has already topped and started its decline. So this is important because if we're looking to short sell, we want to have a big institutional following so that a lot of institutions start dumping shares so that we can profit on the short side. Once a leader tops, it usually takes months before a short sale entry emerges. And the next bullet says that the optimal shorting point is often five to seven months after the absolute peak. So this is kind of counterintuitive because when you talk about short selling, a lot of people want to try to short sell it right at the top and catch the very top. But it's harder to do that. Not that it can't be done, but it's riskier and you might have to take a lot more shots at it before you catch it. Whereas if you wait and be patient months after the stock has topped, people tend to have forgotten about it and there's less people trying to make short-term profits. And that's when you'll start seeing the institutions start to really dump the stock. And that's when your odds of making money on the short side are the highest. Okay, after a stock sharply breaks the 50-day moving average, they will often attempt a few rally attempts above the moving average before they fail for good. And I'll show some examples here with charts. There's something called a black cross, which means that the 10-week moving average will cross below the 40-week moving average. And I'll show this in a chart as well. But if you see a black cross, which you often will in a good short sale candidate, you'll often see a short break, a sharp break in price within one to two months, within one week to two months of the black cross. So if you see this, you're a lot of times you're within a couple months of a good short sale entry. And the single most important factor in short selling is correct timing, because we know the market is generally trending upward. So if we're trying to make money on the downside, we have to be very careful about when we do that. Okay, so this is Biogen, and this is a stock I recently shorted. So a couple 
things I want to illustrate here from the previous slide. One is, is the black cross. And you can see that right here. You can see that the shorter term 10 week moving average crossed below the longer term 40 week moving average. And there were some, there was a good short sale entry in, in this area right here. So you can see we were, we were a few months after that occurred. Okay. So that shows the significance of looking for that. Another thing is that this shows is a large price break. So right here, we had a large price break. You can see it's the widest bar on the chart. It was in the highest volume on the chart. So that's a really ominous sign after a stock has made a long run, such as, as this one has. And we can't see it all right here, but this stock ran for a long time and made a big move. So these are some, some things you want to look for. And in my opinion, Biogen was a, is a, was a good candidate and still is a good one to watch for a short sale. Although they did just report earnings yesterday and the stock did go up quite a bit, but it's bouncing off of one of the moving averages again. Okay, after a stock forms three to four bases and makes a big run, it becomes too obvious to many people and it starts to top. So we know that a third stage base has a, a higher likelihood of failing than an earlier stage base. A fourth stage base has a higher likelihood of failing than a third stage and so on. So if a stock makes a big run and forms a lot of bases, then everybody starts jumping on board. And this is when you tend to get a climax top. And that's the time when you want to be selling, not buying. So the final rally attempts above a 50-day moving average will usually occur on lighter volume than the prior attempts. So you want to see the stock making a few rally attempts above the 50-day, ideally, and you want to see them becoming progressively smaller in volume. And as the, as the stock moves higher above the moving average, you want to see volume declining. And that's a good sign for a short sale, because after that, if you see volume pick up on the downside, that's when you want to sell short. And when covering a short position, covering means you close out the position, meaning you, you buy the stock at whatever price at which it's trading. This is a little trickier than with long positions, at least in my opinion. You generally want to, you know, you want to set your own profit goal here. Probably 20 to 25% is when you want to cover your position, unless the stock undercuts a prior low or a prior area of support because when that happens, the stock will tend to rally. And if you have a short position, you could get, you could take some losses pretty quickly. So with Biogen, again, from the, from the previous slide, we talked about rally attempts occurring on light volume. So if you look here, We can see that we have a, the stock made a big plunge here, okay? It rallied, now this is a weekly, so I, I can't tell for sure, but this rallied above here, here, and then one more time. So it, it looks like three, although I'd have to count on the daily chart. And I want to point out this here. Look how light the volume is as this thing rallied, this last rally attempt, okay? And especially look at the last week when it is, as it's moving higher and higher above the, the 10 week, the volume is very light, okay? That is a great sign for a short sale. And this week right here is when you, want to, when you would want to short sell this because it broke back through that moving average. It rallied on light volume and volume picked up on the week of the plummet. Okay, so that is a, a great, I mean, that's a textbook short sale setup right there. And in terms of former resistance, this one, if you look here, this is the prior, this is kind of the longer term low right here. So 
this one's a little bit trickier, but if, if you were, let's, let's say you were to short sell it around here when it broke through the moving averages, when it undercuts this low like it did right here, I'm going to look at this day. This is the first day when it undercut that low. See how it rallied back up, and volume was heavy during that week. So that shows that you want to watch for these prior support areas because the stock will tend to find support there the first and maybe even the first couple times. You know, and this shows here another, the, the prior low before that. And you can see we're, we're kind of showing the same thing here. It, it, you know, it's kind of peaking below these values right here, but you want to be aware of those, val of those prior support areas and prior lows when you're looking at when you want to cover your short position. All right, next topic with short selling is called a head and shoulders pattern. I'll show uh, an example on the next slide, but ideally you want the right shoulder to be lower than the left. There may be multiple right shoulders, and you want to see volume increasing as the chart goes from left to right. This is an excerpt from Bill O'Neill's book, How to Make Money in How to Make Money Selling Stocks Short, and this shows what a head and shoulders pattern would generally look like. And here at B we've got the head. A would be the left shoulder, and C would be the right shoulder. And you can see that here we talk about if this line, this dotted line, is a 50 day moving average, there show a few rallies above that. And then the proper short sale entry is when it fails, when it falls below the 50 day after the third or fourth try, that's a proper short sale point. You can also see that this stock shows a huge break right here. Probably, it probably would be the widest bar day on the chart in the heaviest volume in months. Okay, so that's a sign. When this happens, you want to put this on your watch list as, as a short sale candidate. And there's something called the neckline, which is drawn at the bottom of of the head of the shoulder. So sometimes you'll see you'll see them draw a neckline connecting kind of connecting the lows of the left and right shoulder um, we could say this is the neckline for the left shoulder this is the neckline for the right shoulder these can be useful in identifying places to cover your short position so here's an example of a head and shoulders pattern from a recent one. And this is NXP Semiconductor. This is a good example because this stock made a big move in the past few years. And you can see here, here's the head, here's a left shoulder, and then here's a right shoulder. And then after that, you can see that the stock is now, we've, we've got a black cross here. Okay, that's when the 10 week cross below the, the 40 week. We've got the stock hitting resistance right here. We're hitting resistance at the 40 week moving average. We've got a big down week here, a wide bar down week in the heaviest volume on the chart. And then up in here, you can see that the stock rallies back up and volume is light these two weeks right here which is good. Now this week is heavy volume and it's blue, but it's a stalling week because it bounced off of the 40 week. And see how volume was heavy there. So that was actually a good time to, sh to sell short this stock. And if you miss that, another opportunity came up right here because the stock rallied in super light volume. And then volume picked up these two weeks here and the stock broke back through the 10 week right here. So this would have been another opportunity to short sell here. There's, there's actually a number of short selling opportunities on this chart, but you can see like we talked about on the previous slide, volume is, if you start at the left side here and move to the right, you can see that volume is picking up, which is what you want to see in a short sale. Okay, the other type of short sale we're, we're going to look at is called a late stage base breakout failure. And this means that a stock is forming, it formed a late stage base, let's say a third, fourth, fifth stage or later, and it attempted to break out, but it failed. 
and ideally it would have a huge have a big break from that so here you can see we got a late stage base it tried to break out here and it failed in huge volume the biggest volume on the chart then the stock went up and tried and made a several rally attempts above the 50-day moving average before a proper short sale entry occurs and you can see on this chart the short sale entry happens on heavy volume on the downside so besides a head and shoulders this is another textbook pattern that you want to use for short selling and NXPI is actually also an example of a late stage base breakout failure because right here we have a cup shaped base which it broke out right here tried to break out and then immediately failed and then we already covered what happened in this area where there were a couple opportunities to short sell so this one happens to be an example of a late stage base breakout failure and a head and shoulders pattern another example is Amberella and I actually got really aggressive with this one and I actually shorted this stock at during the week it it finally cli formed its climax top and then I covered the position here and this this isn't a textbook way to short sell but it's, it's a really aggressive way but I actually covered my position here and didn't re-enter which you can see was a huge, huge mistake because I would have made a killing nap by now but this is a good short sale candidate because in 2015 Amberella formed this climax top okay it had it had formed a this was a, a late stage base right here broke out and you can see how this thing goes nearly vertical and this is called going parabolic and this happened on huge volume and then we had a big break right here this week big break in the heaviest volume on the chart now this stock in this case rallied back up it tried it tried to rally back up here but it failed right around the same point okay so it hit resistance around that same level and then we had another big break right here and this stock declined quite a bit before i'd say a, a classic short sale entry occurred however you could have tried it this week right here when it broke through the 10 week on heavy volume you also could have tried it it tried to, to rally right here on short on lighter volume and then the next week it broke below the 40 week on heavier volume you could also have tried a short sale there here we've got a black cross and i mentioned earlier and over here you can see that the the stock rallied above the 10 week a number of times here and look how volume is getting so light here on the rally attempts so this week here and this week here volume is is very light and after that this week here this was another good this is like a secondary short sale entry when volume picked up okay so volume increased right here it broke through the decisively broke through the 10 week and you can see if you caught it somewhere around there around 50 now the stock's trading below 40 so 40 to 50 is that would be a 20 percent gain i believe so you could have made you could have made you could have basically covered the position around here and made 25 percent in a matter of a month so that's power of short selling you can you can often make quicker return bigger returns in a shorter period than you could from buying long and this is the last example this is Skechers this is one I recently shorted this stock made a huge run for a long time and it also formed a climax top right here you can see all these up weeks in a row right here very powerful move right here and then it it kind of went vertical here parabolic and then after that we had this huge break right here i mean look this is the widest bar on this chart by far in the heaviest volume so that was a good sign to start putting this thing on your watch list for a short sale after that we have a black cross right here and 
you can see the stock made a rally. It rallied up here against and bounced off the 10-week. The that would have been a good, you could have tried the short sale right there because it rallied up here in light volume and then it bounced off of the 10-week in higher volume. So that showed that was a stalling week. If you missed it there, you could have waited till here. You can see that it rallied two weeks in very light volume and then volume picked up the following two weeks. So I would say either of those weeks would be acceptable short sales. I probably would wait till it broke through the 10 week right here in heavier volume. And I in fact did short sell this here and I ended up I ended up taking a couple percent gain because it started actually did start to rally. But this was a, a good short sale setup as well. Okay, in conclusion about short selling, if you want to learn more, you can go to the short side column on investors.com. You can also take a look at these books. Most of the information I cited here was from How to Make Money Selling Stocks Short from Bill O'Neill. And then Gil Morales and Chris Catcher have two books where they talk about short selling. Trade Like an O'Neill Disciple, they have a, a good section about short selling in here. They actually have some chart patterns that I didn't talk about here, uh, some additional chart patterns for short selling. And then this book I have not read, but I'm going to get it this year. This is a book all about short selling. And I think Gil Morales is recognized as one of the experts in the world about short selling, more so than Bill O'Neill. So he's probably a better resource to learn this than from IBD. Okay, we'll do a quick market analysis and we'll wrap up here. So right now, the NASDAQ is showing an E accumulation distribution rating. Okay, not too good on a scale from A to E. And when I took this snapshot of the market pulse, the NASDAQ and S&P were both in an uptrend under pressure with one distribution day. Now that's a low distribution day count, but the, keep in mind, the market went into an uptrend on January 27th, and the very next day was a, was a distribution day. And that is not a good sign. You don't want to see distribution so shortly after a new uptrend. Also, growth stocks were damaged very badly during this January correction. And I'm not seeing very many stocks at all in proper bases. So this is not a, a good time to be buying stocks. In fact, that's why I started looking at short selling. I think it's a good time to be thinking about having a watch list for short selling. But who knows? It, it could go. It, the market could start rallying. Next week, uh, nobody knows. Here we've got a monthly chart of the NASDAQ, so just a longer term view. We had the, right here was the financial crisis, the last bear market. And then we talked about intermediate corrections before. You could see like one here, here, we've got a couple in here. We've got some, maybe a smaller one there, there, there. So you can go through and count those and do the math on that if you want. But you can see this has been running for a long time. And if we draw a trend line about where we were, and we could argue that we've broken that trend line, or we could draw it over here or over here. It's kind of unclear, but the bottom line is we're, we're in a, we've been in a long-term uptrend now. We could be going into a bear market. Who knows? You know, you can see the market is declining down right here over the past couple months. So regardless, this bull market is long in the tooth. This has been going on for a long time and it's made a long, it's made a big move. So this is a riskier time to be buying stocks than we would prefer. Weekly chart, you can see over the last month we had two down weeks in, in heavy volume here and the market opened the year on a bad note. So you can see here this first week in January, the market gapped down beneath the 10 week and the, the 40 week. Okay, so this is like a, a mini black cross right here. And the next week was down on even heavier volume. And then we've made a rally attempt here last week Although volume was lighter, it was above average. And then this week, so far, volume is 
tr tracking to be a little lower. So hard to say what will happen here, but we can definitely see that the market is, you know, we kind of had some resistance up in here. That actually coincides with the market top from 2000. But overall, not too good right now. Not great. And then here's a daily chart. And I want to point out here, we had this flash crash back, back in here, back in August. If you look here, the low for that is pretty, pretty consistent with the low we just saw. So you can see here the market, it gapped below this low. We, we had another low right here where you can see it, where we went below that, but then it found support. So it looks like for now the market's holding this previous low, and that's good in a way, but if it breaks through that low, then we'll be looking for an, another low farther back here as the next area of support. So wrapping up, if you found this video on YouTube and you're not a member of the Meetup group, then you can follow the below link and you can join the group. You just need a free Meetup account. And the reason you should join is that this presentation and other files like cheat sheets are posted in the Meetup group. So you also will be notified if new videos are posted if you join. If you don't want to join, you can always follow the YouTube channel where you found this video. There were no questions from members last month. And in conclusion, future topics, I'm going to cover a monthly and quarterly investing routine, and that's going to wrap up all of the investing routines that are covered over the past couple months. I'm going to do a review of some investing books and then look at some recent stocks. So if you have a suggestion for a future topic, just let me know. Send me a message on Meetup. And if you also have any questions, send me a message and I'll include the answer in the next video. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in February.